What's up everyone, Rain of Iron here once again with another Rain review, and today we're going to be talking about Shonen Jump's Jump Force. Now before I get into this, I'd like you to notice the little logo on the bottom left hand of your screen. That's going to be there throughout some of the portions of this review because I recorded a lot of this gameplay footage from my PlayStation 4, and unfortunately they have a hard block on all cutscenes as well as pictures, and so you're not going to be seeing any cutscene footage from the story or outside of the story because I couldn't record it. So I can't I couldn't add it to this review, but I'm still going to talk about the story. I'm still going to tell you about it without spoiling too much for you. Now, overall, this game is fun and it is enjoyable, especially to the point where I played this game all through the entire story and I played a lot of hours in this game. And I've played with at least every character at least once so let's get into this review so I can tell you what I truly think of Shonen Jump and Bandai Namco's Jump Force so to get things started I wanted to talk about the character creation as well as customization now this is the part of the game in my opinion where this game is at its best it allows you to create your own character and customize that character throughout the story giving him special moves, changing his hairstyle, giving him new clothes, it really makes your character feel like he's an anime character. However, when put next to the other anime characters within the game, your character does still somewhat stick out like a sore thumb. Now, I love the fact that this game really goes out of its way to make sure the customization is actually really good. At least in my opinion. You can create your character however you want, make him look however you want, change his hairstyle to whatever you want, and they even have features such as tattoos, they have scars, even you can give your character a mustache if you want to. But overall, this is one of the only outlying things in the game that I feel like the game gets right. This game is really fun, and part of the reason that it is fun is because it allows you to create your own anime character. It makes it feel like you're actually making a difference in this game. To a point, customizing your character becomes possibly, in my opinion, the funnest thing about the game next to the combat. And I enjoyed making my character. I made my own character named Legion, and he is, in my opinion, a badass because I made him. And it really does things for this game in my opinion when you can actually create your character to the exact T of what you want to create your character there are some games out there ha that have character creations that may be better but there's a lot of games out there that have really dull character creations this game is not one of them this game's character creation is a strong point for this game so right after you create your character you get dropped right into the story and you get introduced to some of these characters and some of the villains that are going to be in the game and you learn about these things called umbris cubes but before you get into the actual story of the game you get to go to the hub area which i felt like the hub area in this game was really reminiscent of dragon ball xenoverse and, and maybe a little bit like xenoverse 2 but on a smaller scale this hub area is really kind of dull and boring I mean it has three different areas that you can go to and talk to Goku Naruto or Monkey D Luffy from their respective franchises Dragon Ball Naruto and One Piece but scenery wise this area is just kind of dull and I mean <laughs> I don't know it's it just it seems almost like that they could have done more with this hub area, but they decided against it for some reason, or maybe this is just the way they intended to do it in the first place, but in my opinion, the hub area is very lackluster and doesn't really make me want to stay there, and I know that the whole point of the hub area is just to go to missions and meet people, but it doesn't even make me want to stay in the hub area to meet people, and it's just kind of bland. The hub area I know is not a big deal for some people, but for me, hub area is where you meet your friends and where you meet new people, where you talk and stuff. 
you know, where you chat and shit like that. And the hub area in this game is just really lackluster to me. And that's all I really have to say about the hub area. And uh, we're going to get into the combat of this game. Now the combat is, of course, the main course of this game. It's what everybody is picking this game up to play. What everyone wants to play this game for is because of the combat. This game's combat is awesome. It really is. It's beautiful, it's well designed, and it actually encourages strategy as you're fighting. For example, there's certain characters that can't even attack women, like Sanji from One Piece. You know, he's completely ineffective against female characters. However, there are only, I think, three female characters in the entire game. The roster consists of about 40 characters, with including heroes and villains. Now, there are supposed to be nine downloadable characters in packs coming out. I just don't know when those nine characters are coming out. But, after you get through the honeymoon phase of this game, the combat just kind of... I don't know. It, to put it bluntly, the combat just seems to get old after a while. Now, don't get me wrong, it's fun. And I enjoyed every single match that I fought. But it eventually boils down to that it's just another fighting game. And it doesn't really do anything different or new than another fighting game does. That's how I feel. And upon that, I really can't say that the combat in this game is the best I've ever played. It's, it's, it's really good, it's fun. But eventually it gets repetitive and tedious because you end up fighting the same enemies over and over and over again and the combat in this game consists of fighting heroes villains and of course random characters such as uh, venoms that's what they call them in this game that are just generic enemies but overall the combat in this game is is good it's fun and it it's really strategy based because if you just go in button mashing, you're going to get your teeth kicked in. You actually have to know your character's skill sets. You actually have to know how to use your character as you go in and fight in this game. But it eventually gets old. To me, in my opinion, it eventually gets old. That's not saying it's not fun. It's just saying that's all the game really has going for it. I mean, I fought a, I fought a boss in this game three times in a row because the game made, makes you do it <laughs> you know it's like throw something else at me instead of fighting the same guy three times you know but the combat in this game it, it's a it's a bright spot it really is I would give the combat in this game a solid 8 out of 10 but that's really all this game has going for it and unfortunately it's not strong enough to keep me from giving it the score I'm going to give it so let's talk about this 40-man roster. And honestly, it's this roster is confusing to me. Because I know for a fact that Shonen Jump has a lot of different manga and anime under their banner, under their license. So why do we have six Naruto characters and then Yugi? Where's Seto Kaiba? Where's Merrick or Joey? You know, <laughs> I don't understand. Where's all these other different Shonen Jump characters? Yes, a lot of these franchises are here. There's a lot of them. But some of them only have one character. When you have One Piece that has six, Dragon Ball Z has six, Naruto has six, you know. Even Hunter x Hunter has four, at least. But for, where's Tokyo Ghoul? Where's One Punch Man? Where's Trigun? Where's my Vash the Stampede, man? <laughs> I love Trigun. I wish Vash was in this game. He'd fit in so well, I think. I don't understand where where these characters are. But ultimately, your 40-man roster consists of a lot of the same franchises. There are a lot of franchises that are here, and they're represented. But they're only represented by one or two characters. In a 40-man roster, you could have easily had three characters apiece from the big three, Naruto, One Piece, and Dragon Ball, and still been able to make a good 40-man roster. 
but I, again, it's one of the weak points I feel like in this game because they went too heavy on the big three. That's my opinion. Now I want to talk about something I actually like about this game, and that is of course the graphics. They are downright gorgeous. They're beautiful. When you're doing your special moves or even just fighting in general, the graphics in this game are bar none. They're 10 out of 10. And you can tell the people who designed the graphics in this game really care about these characters. Because some of these character models are really good. Some of them not so much. Some of them look a little weird. Some of them even downright gross, in my opinion. But the battle damage that your characters ensue while fighting and the damage that the arena that you're fighting in takes, the just the... The art design in this game is awesome, and the sound design is just as good as the art design. Both, 10 out of 10 in my opinion, for art design and sound design. The game developers really did a good job on those areas. However, I feel like for everything this game does good, there's something always seemingly holding it back. And in this case, for the graphics and the character models in general, during cutscenes, uh, when they're talking, their mouths just don't match the words that they're saying, and it looks odd sometimes. Now, this game does not have a dubbed version, so you're going to be playing this game with the Japanese voices, the Japanese voice actors. And I wouldn't have a problem with that if it wasn't for the mouths just looking weird on some of the character models when they talk. Now, for one, for me, it's... They, I feel like they could have saved money if they would have instead just went with the text box route. Because they already have the text boxes in the game anyway. But instead they went with the voice actors. And I do appreciate that they do have some of the original voice actors for some of these characters. However, the mouths just don't work for some of these character models. Because it just makes them look weird. And it's kind of cringeworthy when watching these cutscenes. But other than that, the sound design and the art design in this game is beautiful. And it by far is the best, best thing about this game, next to the combat. And if it wasn't for the combat, you wouldn't have that beautiful art design. But now I want to get into the story. I won't be able to show you anything from the story cutscene wise, but I can definitely talk about it. And I will try to avoid major plot points not to spoil anything for those who still want to go out and get this game but I do need to talk about the story because I feel like it's the weak point in this game now before I actually get into the story I wanted to show you guys where my character started in the story compared to where he was when he finished as you can see I mean not a big difference mostly just cosmetic but that's basically all the customization in this game is is purely cosmetic except for the attacks that you can equip. Now, let's get into the story, and if you know me and you know how I review games, you'll know that I base a lot of the game's score on how good a story is. It's almost... F I, I can give a, a game with a good story right off the bat a 5 out of 10. And I have been known to give games that don't have stories, you know, good scores. Uh, for example, Call of Duty Black Ops 4... Despite not having a story, I still gave it an above average score. Certain games that do things well, I you know, I can look past not having a story or having a lackluster story. But in this game, I mean, the story is different, I guess. But it, it, a lot of it doesn't make sense. And yes, I know, it is a bunch of anime mumbo jumbo. You know, it, but the, the story is basically the Avengers Jump, uh, Shonen Jump Edition. It's basically the Avengers Shonen Jump Edition. It really is. It has that Avengers feel to it. And it's funny because I was I was half expecting Loki or Thanos to show up. <laughs> but no, it, it sticks to the Shonen Jump characters. It's just the story is very convoluted and in a lot of ways to me does not make sense. And again, it is just it's an anime story to its core. It really is. And it, it introduces some new characters into the game that are not really shown in jump characters, but they were actually created by Akira Toriyama. And that's cool. So the main villain of this game is pretty generic, in my opinion. And that's one of the biggest 
drawbacks of this game is the fact that it does have a pretty generic uh, main villain. But you also get your other villains. You know, you get to see Blackbeard from One Piece. You get to see Frieza from Dragon Ball. Even uh, Yagami Light from Death Note makes an appearance. But all in all, these Umbrus cubes, they take over these heroes, they take over these villains, and you're basically just fighting the same characters over and over again because they're being controlled by the cubes. It never really tries to throw anything new at you. The story really does just consist of watch this cutscene, fight this character, watch another cutscene, fight another character, go back to the hub area, watch another cutscene, and it just keeps going. And the cutscenes aren't even that interesting. They look pretty, and the characters are, you know, it's, it's really cool to see all these, this ensemble of characters come together for this story. But at the same time, <laughs> just... You know, just in general, how you obtain your powers in this game is also, in my opinion, pretty generic. You know, and I don't want to spoil nothing for you, but the story in this game just isn't that good. And if I had to give the story a rating, I'd probably give the story a 4 out of 10. And that's not a good thing for me. If I'm giving a story a 4 out of 10, what do you think the actual final score for this game is going to be? You know, and there's a lot I didn't tell you because there's a lot I don't want to tell you because I want people to actually play this game because it is a fun game. It really is. It's arguably, in my opinion, the best fighter game that I've played in a while. But it does boil down to just being another fighter. You, you're better off probably going and playing uh, Dragon Ball Fighters or picking up, you know picking up a Marvel vs. Capcom game or the new Super Smash Bros. This game just doesn't do anything to separate itself from the fighting genre. And ultimately, that's why I have to give this game a 7 out of 10. It's, it, it's really close to being a 6. I'm not going to lie. It really is close to being a 6 because of the problems with the story. You know, because of the because of the character customization, that saves it. The combat saves it. The beautiful graphics and the sound design save this game from falling to a 6. But ultimately, it's a 7, and it's nothing higher than that. And I can't give it anything higher than that with a, with a good conscience. So, yes, Shonen Jump's Jump Force is a fun fighter, but... That's all it is. It's good for for play through one time, playing with all the characters, and also it has online. I have not played online, and I don't plan to play online. But I'll tell you, this game is a 7 out of 10. If you're an anime fan, go buy it. You'll love this game because it's got all your favorite Shonen Jump characters. Well, most of them. If you're a Dragon Ball... One Piece or Naruto fan, it probably has your favorite characters. But this game is a 7 out of 10, and it's nothing higher than that. This has been Reign of Iron with another Reign review, and thank you for watching.